March 31st, and the time is 2.02 p.m. Before I ask the City uh, uh, Commissioner Lister to do this e afternoon's invocation, it is my honor to introduce you for the first time in the United States, Shane and Cheryl Frost. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Lister, will you please give this afternoon's invocation? I will, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Sorry I'm late, everybody. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the safe trip down here. I know I was driving too fast, but uh, <laughs> you always protect me. And uh, we just ask that you continue to uh, bestow blessings upon the uh, citizens of Madeira Beach and the city of Madeira Beach, that we always keep you in our guidance and our wisdom. So it's all of these things in your name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag. flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, Ms. Crawford, you can take the roll. <laughs> Mayor Palladino? Here. Commissioner Lister? Here. Commissioner Hodges? Here. Commissioner Spilvey? Mr. Mayor, just to explain the roll call, uh, we, we do have a quorum today. Obviously, we have three members. One member, uh, Hush Kavahi, was never appropriately uh, uh, placed in his spot uh, due to an unintentional sunshine violation, so he is not part of the commission today. And um, Ingrid Farrell Spildy is on vacation. So uh, we do have a, a quorum for a, a meeting that's more or less a technicality, um, but just so uh, everybody understands that in the audience and at home. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. We have no minutes to be approved. At this time, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. I so move, Mr. Mayor. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments from staff, Mr. City Manager? No, sir. Next public comment. This section is in reserve for public comment. Matters pertaining to city business and which are not on the agenda. Public comment is limited to three minutes. Would anybody like to speak this afternoon? Yes, sir. Bobby. Mayor, make sure that this this needs to. You got to turn it on. No, you just got to speak into it directly. You got to get into it pretty deep. But <laughs> does it before you start? Uh, is is this got to do with an agenda item or something that's not on the agenda today? Oh, I didn't look at the agenda. Oh yeah, I, I, I had a feeling. I think so. you're here for the agenda yeah, item, Bobby. Uh -huh. But anybody else like to speak on anything pertaining to city business and which is not on the agenda? No closing public comment. Consent agenda none, unfinished business none, new business resolution 2017-01, Mr. City Manager. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, before we read that, I, I want to explain why that is on the agenda today. Um, in the city charter, there's two different terms um, in regards to meetings, the next regular um, Board of Commissioners meeting and the next meeting. In your charter, the next meeting after the election, you need to certify the results of the municipal election. Um, it says at the next regular meeting, the newly elected, if newly elected uh, members are sworn in. So that is why that the new, newly elected members are being sworn in on April 11th because that's the next normally scheduled meeting. But today this needs to be ratified because it's the meeting after the election. So if you want me to read that, I can read it by title only. Okay, Mr. C. Manager, would you please read that by title only? Resolution number 2017-01, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, certifying the results of the municipal election held on March 14th, 2017, providing for reading by title only and providing for an effective date. That's all, Mr. Mayor. All right, this time I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to pass resolution number 2017-01. Second, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further comment? Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Spildy, Mayor Palladino. Yes. At this time, uh, uh, before I entertain a motion for the second item, the approval of event application for Spring King of the Beach, Mr. City Manager, would you please uh, give a staff update? Yes, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you all for attending today. I think, again, I used the word technicality, and it might not be a technicality, it's, it's more of a, an oversight. As the city of Madeira Beach evolved, we evolved into this town center. We evolved into a lot more than what we were five years ago. Five years ago, we had two events in, in Madeira Beach, and that was the spring and fall King of the Beach. In fact, there was a, a, a previous uh, city commissioner when I was hired that said, Shane, if you don't do anything, bring events to Madeira Beach. So 
We did. We, we, and, and now we've got, geez, we've got concerts, we've got carnivals, we've got things on Madeira Way. We've got things happening weekly, if, if you look at uh, uh, Doug Andrews' schedule at the Rec Department. So as we began those events, we found that we needed to assert certain fees for certain amenities that we've now either created or are utilizing. And one of them being the ball diamonds. Now, the ball diamonds are not the ball diamonds of 2010. These are NCAA. It's late. He's loud. I mean, geez. <laughs> anyway, so the fields are obviously pristine. NCAA Division One uh, ball players play on them, and prior to that, the field rental was a fifty dollar fee. And I can remember being there in two thousand and twelve and. The mayor at the time comes and says, Tommy Burdinsky, come on up and tell us all about it. And you know, we go through that whole spiel. Well, between 2012 and 2013, we were doing that three, four, five times a, a, a meeting and maybe even having to hold special meetings to okay an event permit. So that's when that commission of, of that time said, we need to handle this administratively because this is kind of getting out of hand. Then comes in the new fee schedule. And we, we put established a fee schedule based on the, the fields. And I think what we omitted was a caveat. And the caveat being this, you know, if we have a charitable organization that comes in and does, I'm going to use the old salts for example, they do, you know, uh, fishing tournaments for kids on off the seawall and they, they donate to charity and, and they donate to us. And it might not be $3,000 a day like the sports commission does, but they certainly do turn around and, and scratch our back as well. Um, last year, they gave us a check for $10,000 for the use of the event field. And I, I, we have to remember that word event field because we created three pristine ball diamonds, but one of them was also to be used for, for events. Um, it's probably the most expensive one out there, but it's also the biggest one. So I, I want to use some analogies or some examples as to why I think this is, this is an issue. For example, if Dave Marsicano came to me and said, I want to hold a softball tournament tournament for disabled children, and I want to waive the turn, or I would like to waive the fee. But at the end, on the money that I raise, I'll give you fifty percent. Would we waive the fee? Probably. That's kind of what this is all about. The problem is we didn't put that caveat into the fee schedule, and now you guys that you've passed the fee schedule have to, if you adopted it, you have to be the ones to waive it. That's why we're here today. Um, I asked the old Celts. A couple, a series of questions. Number one being, can it wait until April 11th? The tournament is 27th, so that's a, that's a squeeze if you're doing a, a good job of marketing. Um, and I, I think the risk would be small that the the commission of April 11th would say no to this, but there's a risk, and they didn't want to risk that, so they asked for a special meeting for the mayor to hold that. Um, there are caveats to waiving the fee, and we need the field to be returned in the condition that it is. Um, you know, there's a lot of vehicles, a lot of boats parked out there. We've got a million dollar drain system out there. And so we have to be very careful that they're not driving stakes into water lines and, for, you know, crushing the drain system and those types of things. Um, so Doug Andrews, my rec director, is paid to do two things, make money out there and protect our asset. And that's what he's doing. He's being a good little soldier. From my standpoint, I think this is a, a, a good civic event that Madeira Beach A sometimes gets credit for, but B, it puts us on the map. And it, we have to remember that from 2004 to 2012, that's all we had in terms of events. So there's, I don't want to say we, we owe them, but we certainly hosted them for quite some time, and we've never said we're going to enforce this fee. So I spoke to a gentleman yesterday saying, if you're going to enforce the fee, fine, but let us know a year in advance so we can work it into our registration system or something like that. My, my take on it is, it's a it's a civic event. People love it. Um, you know, if we're gonna, I don't want to say say no to fishing in Madeira Beach, but it certainly is, you know we don't want to be the the city that said oh we don't want the biggest kingfish tournament in in, in the in the country, right? So, uh, you know, it, again, I, I call I asked this to ask the mayor to have this meeting today because there was a risk, and we don't want to risk losing these people. I know for a fact there are several communities that want to take this event away from us. We've done it to other people before. And, and not intentionally, not maliciously, but I don't think we want to lose them. Um, in terms of economic impact, this is the greatest scenario possible. And I, I've said this before, even before I got here, 
whenever you can create a situation where a bunch of people come to your town, drop a lot of money, and then leave, that's good business. They don't go to jail, they don't infiltrate your schools, they don't raise your property taxes, they just come blow a bunch of money and go home. That's, that's a good business decision. So again, that's basically why we're here today. I know we've got a lot of people in the audience that want to talk. This is not, again, a malicious way to sweep something under the rug with the current commission. We've been forgiving, not forgiving, waiving this fee since 2004. And they always turn around and scratch our back. I can remember 2012, 2013, uh, where Dave was even running the rec department at that time, we had like a foosball table with like three players on it and, and a broken down pool table and the old salts come on in, take all that old junk out and replace it with all new stuff. They always scratch our back civically and you know, we're in the same position now to do that again. So I would certainly think that we won't want, want to turn our back on them and that's why I got it in front of you all today. So with that, Mr. Mayor, my long-winded version of why we're here today and uh, with that, you can probably take some public comment, and uh, I guess at the end, you know, the city has a couple of recommendations or requests, but that's just in regards to, you know, returning the fields back to the way that they found them, making sure that the garbage is picked up, that if anything's broken, they'll fix it, so on and so forth, and we've got that an addendum to the, uh, to the application. Okay, thank you, Mr. City Manager. At this time, I will entertain a motion to for approve of event application for Spring King of the Beach. Mr. Mayor, I make that motion. I second. I have a motion and a second. And first of all, I'd like to say, knowing this organization for probably close to 20 years now, I think in the last 10 years I've seen the, through the PNLs and what this uh, club has done, I think y'all have raised over a million dollars for local child, uh, for charities. I think Children's Make-A-Wish, Children's Hospital, uh, Park, which is outstanding. I know this past year where the economic impact has truly been shown through the TDC and the CVB, where I believe you got $65,000 of elite event money for this event. So that's showing, y'all have had to show the economic impact in putting the heads and beds in this community. So guys, uh, this is, both these uh, events are outstanding. I know it's well loved by the residents and uh, that's all I've got to say on that. Y'all have done a great job with it. Commissioner Timmy Payne. I just wanted to say something. Um, the event's always been very well organized very well put together, and it does draw a lot of people to this area. Um, I did have a question for Tommy, if I can have him to come forward. I've got to swear you in first. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. Yeah, guys, thank you for having us. Tommy, I just wanted to verify with you for the record. When the event is over, the cleanup process, yeah. who is responsible for that? Uh, we've always been responsible for the cleanup. We actually hire an outside company now called uh, Extreme Clean. We come clean up. We also have the uh, we have Goodwill out cleaning up, as well as the Boy Scout and Girl Scouts come out and help clean up the event on Sunday and into Monday. The event is great, and a lot of people here in town they do enjoy it. They look forward to it. We try to leave it cleaner than what we found it, and we always have. Mr. Mayor, I think uh, not to dovetail off of what uh, Commissioner Hodges said, though, is it, it's imperative, um, and in, I shared the reason with uh, Commissioner Hodges that the field will be available for use Monday night for men's softball. That's a very political group in town, if you yes. <laughs> understand. And, and we've always, we, we've crunched the time, the, the event's grown substantially since we started. I first was in the, in the old commission building in 2003, my daughter was three years old. She turned 17 yesterday. So we, I've been doing this a long time. The event's grown. We we try to shrink the time that we're on the field. Um, we are all volunteers. Nobody's paid in our organization. Um, last year, we due to rain on Sunday, we actually did have to push it back, and we did utilize the stage longer than normal. But we also made that decision in. In and we, we made that decision due to bringing semi trucks on the field in ankle deep water. So, I mean, we, we can't control Mother Nature. And obviously, like I said, we, we treat the field that it's our own. It's, we're part of the community. We've been here for, like I said, on this field since 2004. 2003, when I stood here, he actually gave us approval to have the King of the Beach at the American Legion and at the old Santa Madeira property before it was gone. And that commission at that time asked us if we could come back to him, to the fields and start utilizing it. Since then, we've actually brought the entire infrastructure 
from that time, water, power, brought it in, and two of the new fields were built, uh, which I actually sat on that committee for 18 long months um, <laughs> as part of the user group to bring, to, to, to make it better for other events, what we've learned, what we haven't learned. Um, the other thing that we do, uh, we get a sponsor every year to come out and do the underground utilities ourselves um, before the event. You know, so that's a, that's a big thing we do. We did have a vendor move a tent, hit the water line. We saved it because it couldn't have been any better. The stake went directly through the center of the line. If we break a water line, we anticipate that we would pay for that and make it right. Um, he hit, the, there was an X right where it was at, and he put it right through it. Um, so, you know, so we, we tr like I said, we, we want the fields to be maintained where they're at. We, we don't want to leave, obviously, ruts or any issues for ball players. Uh, we've, if we notice something when we get out there, we try to bring it to Doug's attention or even the staff prior um, that, hey, there's, you know, we, we had someone dig up a portion of the uh, sidewalk prior to the event. You weren't, nobody knew what was happening. We, we, the city and ourselves, we worked together. We got it together and and we're able to make it safe so we could bring people through. So, I mean, that's a huge portion of what we do. I mean, we're not only, we're not a promoter that comes into your town and leaves. We, I, everybody here knows that. I hope everybody at home knows that. Um, we started in Madeira 45 years ago. Our first president, Mr. Spaeth, is actually sitting in the, in the, in the, in the office, uh, in the uh, room today. Um, our very first loop tournament, uh, your chambers actually are late. Ms. Pat Schantz was on our very first loop tournament years and years ago. So you know, we've been here a long time. We do support all the events that the city obviously puts together and does. You've asked, I can remember getting a call from Shane at last minute. Hey, we don't have a sound system for the groundbreaking for City Hall. We loaded up a sound system. We got it out here. Um, you know, we, we, we do that. We had a wedding when the, when the wreck was first built. Hey, we don't have power. Brought a power panel down. You know, we're, we uh, this weekend coming up with Phil Fest. We have over 80 children with big brothers and big big sisters coming out to, on the, to fish off the seawall. We're donating over a thousand rods plus all of our time and, and efforts for the from the board and our and our sponsors to be able to do that. So it's not just you know w before when we came up, we had a whole reading back in the day and and. It used to be at the end of the meeting, which meant I sat here at those times, Terry, you could remember, for hours and hours and hours. And then the special events came up. Shane first, when he came in, he said, oh, listen, we're their special guests, let's do it first. We still did the whole reading, what we're doing, we're, what we're waving, and the fees were always waived, um, even at that time. And that was, like I said, in, in prior to Shane and, and prior to the mo majority of the commission. I don't, Terry, were you here in 2003? Yeah. You were. You've seen me from the beginning, <laughs> as far as ten in here. <laughs> so, you know, it, you know, Travis, you spoke about the economic impact. I mean, w it's over our three events create over ten million dollars of positive economic impact. Uh, we bring thousands of fishermen here. We're a fishing village. We're a fishing community. That's where this all started. That's why the old Sops was founded. Um, you know, we have a sheet out there. I don't know if, if you all got one or not kind of gives a list of everything that we do do, our mission, uh, what we've done in the past few years, some of the new programs that we started with our youth and uh, junior old salt programs and things of that nature. So, and I just appreciate the, the urgency today. Obviously, the event is in a few weeks. The marketing is out, uh, and we're up against a time crunch. And, and it's, uh, I just appreciate everybody taking their time today and the people in the audience to be here. Tom, can you, Shane? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Can you just comment on, on that issue because I, I had a conversation with a, a, a commissioner or mayor-elect this morning, and the whole issue was, you know, why the rush? Why couldn't this wait until the 11th? And I, you know, I spoke to I spoke to Amy, I spoke to you guys, and it just seemed like it, it, that was literally a, an impossibility. And I probably didn't answer her in the urgency that you're probably going to say right now. So I want to be able to relay that. Well, I mean, theoretically, we've already got a, we've we've got the field laid out, the event sold out. Um, you know, our marketing is on the street. The before everything was on a consent, like I said, a consent agenda. We used to have to sit in front 
you know, the month prior to the event. You, we, we do marketing for a year. Our marketing for this year is already done all the way through the fall King of the Beach and into January, or, uh, January of next year already. Um, you know, this was something new to us. It obviously, the fees and the structure that, that we, that's now in place is, is a substantial hit to the organization and the charity. Um, and quite frankly, it's not budgeted anywhere. So it's, um, you know, so when we saw it, we actually, uh, we spoke, uh, you know, it, it was obviously uh, an urgent, urgent matter as far as we're concerned and bringing new people to the field and trying to maintain what we've done and, and maintain the quality of the event and for the anglers. What people don't realize is they look at the, they look at the king of the beach and they, they see the, the magnitude of it. We have over 150,000 square foot under tent. That, that's a lot. Um, and then on top of it, six, 700 boats, tens of thousands of people. You know, they come in, they come out. We pay back 100% to our anglers. Last year, we got over $250,000 of checks on the field to the winners of the event. Husband and wife won the event, young couple. Um, single engine boat, they only fish together. Uh, the apple fields, a big part of the community for a long time. Amazing family. So that was the urgency. It's, you know, it's, like I said, we're used to seeing, we thought business as usual, everybody's good. We saw that we saw, that we got a bill and we said, hey, we need to do something. We found out that at that point that we couldn't um, just waive the fees. We had to come back to the commission like we did in the past since 2003 to get that done, and this was the only time we could do it. Two weeks before the event, and I have a feeling on the 11th it's going to be fairly busy in here. Um, so I think, you know, that was our biggest concern at that point. And I, I know we uh, asked them to be here. Today I, I got to I haven't got to speak to Maggie uh, um, since the Grand Hunt. She's out of the Grand Hunt, and uh, Miss Oakley coming in. She's always been a big supporter of the club. Comes out to all the events. Uh, if they're here, I'd be more than glad to answer any of the questions that they have as well. But it was truly the amount of the bill and the financial burden that would cause us. And like I said, we assumed business as usual, and we ha that there's a change now. So here we are. So, Mr. Mayor, I, I think it's easy to assume that the, the, the new commission probably would take a look at this just as, as anybody is probably looking at it now. Again, that, that fee, uh, we got to remember that w that a fee was established for Division I softball tournaments or, you know, Little League tournaments or those types of things to come on in. We as the, ne the next commission have to take a look at a caveat or, 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 or a, a sub part of this ordinance because uh, charities such as Rotary is another one, you know, uh, the, the old salts, those types of things that bring in a bunch of people, a bunch of money, put us on the map and then leave. Um, as long as they return our fields to the way they found them and financially they're they're willing to do that, you know, if they hit a water line, they break something, they rut it up, they're going to fix it. That That's the, the city's only major concern, that we that we can resume normal activity when, when they're gone. Um, so... With that, that again, that, that's why we're here. I think it's a glitch in the system, a technicality that'll happen from time to time, and we'll put it on the. Hopefully, have it on the uh, workshop for the next uh, uh, the next commission. Thank you, Tommy. Any other questions for me right now? No, no I don't have any questions for you, Tom. Thank you. I just wanted to say that uh, my family has been in the uh, fishing business for a long time too. I know Buddy Beck started with uh, with Bobby and. Uh, you know, I, I, you, you have to have you have to have kids, and you have to have a, a younger generation to, to keep anything going. Doesn't matter if it's if it's fishing or bowling or t-ball or anything. And these guys really push the young people. I mean, you, you can see. I mean, somebody read this. Don't just don't just come up here and get negative. Read this. I mean, there's there's thousands of kids, thousands of kids that are that are ben benefiting from what these guys do. And they work with us. You know, when we did these fields out here, they moved across the street. They made a deal with with, uh, with another property owner, and they stayed local. And when they stay local, those those boats don't go to Indian Rocks and fill up. They go to the Madeira Beach Marina and fill up. It's it's a win-win-win situation. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I support you 100%. Thank you. And, and like I said, people like Buddy Beggs and, and the Warren Sturgises, I mean, local legends in them, in, in outright, no doubt. So, and that's what started it all. We, we are proud to be able to continue that tradition. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak this afternoon? Yes, sir. <coughs> Anyone else? Mr. Williams, the city 
Yes. My name is Mr. Spencer. I'm a banker. Good brothers, good sisters of the nation. Mitch, I gotta ask you to speak into that mic a lot closer. Can you hear me now? There you go. Sorry. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Oak Park Foundation, and uh, tomorrow, April 1st, I have the city of Deer Butte and big brothers and big sisters in coordination with uh, Oak Park having their first annual seawall fishing event at the Rock Park Seawall. Uh, we currently have 70 littles, 70 kids that probably have never caught a fish before, maybe never even been at the water before, uh, and their mentors are registered for this event. Uh, the Oak Park Foundation is providing every child a free fishing rod and reel. Instructors teach them how to fish and a goodie bag, a, a goodie bag for 70 children. Uh, <coughs> but most importantly, Madeira Beach and the Oak Park Foundation will be giving 70 children the opportunity to catch their very first fish, uh, a memory that will remain with them forever. Uh, I just want to thank you for your time and hope that Madeira Beach and uh, the Oak Park Foundation will be able to continue this event and bring these great memories to our children. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Bob Spaeth. Uh, I've been the executive director of the Southern Offshore Fishing Association <coughs> since I was in my 20s. I was raised here in Madeira Beach. Uh, I still live in the same house since I'm 10 years old. And as Tom said, I was the first president of the Old Salt. If you look at the evolution of what we started with and what this group has turned it into and how many children and people they've helped, Without the city of Madeira Beach helping with, you know, fees and all kinds of things, because I used to do the seafood, John's Pass Seafood Festival. I was president of the, one of the first ones, John Levesque Day. We started all that stuff here. And, you know, I understand some of the city's position on, you know, uh, fees for, like, <coughs> uh, people that come from outside and, and have tournaments, et cetera, et cetera. That's perfect. But when we have something that's as charitable and helpful as the old salts are, it would be a shame to lose our historical significance to another city. Like uh, Mr. Crawford said, there is other cities that would love to have this tournament. They're drooling. So I ask you all to waive the fees. You know, I think you have a reasonable... Uh, program to go forward with the next commission to do the caveat and I think that's uh, I think that's the proper way to go and I would hope that uh, you would all vote in favor of it because this is the grouper republic we have one of the largest we land more grouper in this area than anywhere in the United States we have one of the biggest uh, sports fishing uh, groups here um, also uh, I sit on the advisory Florida boating advisory panel for the governor and we meet in Tallahassee they know about Madeira Beach and the old salt because of these tournaments um, so I would I would hope and that uh, you would go ahead and, and uh, suspend the fee for this year for those of us thank you Bob before you leave how long were uh, how did you become the president and uh, your organization of that show thing Maybe 30 years since 19, let's say 1980. Anyhow, might be early. Scopa was I don't definitely tell everybody my age. Scopa was the first seafood festival, but it's been, it's been that show. Bobby Bunny. Anyone else? Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Fawcett. I'm the general manager for Fisherman's Ideal Supply House right down the road. I'm here to support the Old Salt. We're one of the 
few members in their group that donate directly to the children. As a business, we feel that that's the most important aspect of all of our lives in this community. I hope that you guys can help these guys waive the fees so that we can continue to have this great foundation doing what they do. Um, I'm gonna reiterate what you say. We, we strongly believe as a business that the children are our future. If we don't take care of them, why are they gonna come back? Um, from our business standpoint, that's how we feel. We hope that y'all do the same. It brings a great amount of people to our business as well as everybody else. And we'd like to see that keep happening. Please don't take it from the land. Thank you. Randy Keyes, longtime resident of Madeira Beach and member of the old salt since 1985. I think I was president in 1991, somewhere around then. But what, what the commission needs to realize about how the old salt puts Madeira Beach on the map. I mean, people come from North Carolina. You've got thousands of people coming down here to fish. And fishing out of boats is not cheap. Fishing from a seawall, relatively inexpensive. Fishing from a boat, you used to have a boat. Travis, you know what what you have to pay for fuel, bait, ice, everything. Um, you know, these people are dumping lots of money here. Plus, the name recognition is unbelievable. I'm over in, I'm sail fishing two weeks ago with Dominic and Spring Break in Palm Beach. Meet guys on the dock. Hey, how you doing? Hey, where are you from? Oh, Madeira Beach. Hey, that's where they have that King of the Beach tournament. You know, I mean, that. You got something here that you got to keep, and you got to keep it in Madeira Beach. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, I'm Carson Caddy, and I go to Osceola Fundamental High School. And I just wanted to uh, say a little bit about the uh, work that Jeff has done for me, and also uh, my experiences at the high school. So. Uh, Earlier it was mentioned that uh, the Old Salt have uh, considerably really young kids, but they also do a big thing for the uh, seniors. Uh, I, I mentioned I'm an honor student now, and I started thinking about college, and I would not have done that without the Old Salt being there and helping me and guiding me to get to med med school college. And uh, I think the difference in the style of uh, Dan Donovan, he would he was a huge big part in uh, getting me out there in the field. And uh, my best friend now, uh, Taylor Bilkey, he's also a student, and he was a teacher there. There's a lot of us. There's such a, there's so many uh, teams and schools in Britain that's just good, and we get our community kids down here to get their best chance scholarship, and we wouldn't get that without the old salt. He made that much easier. Taylor uh, actually helped in our uh, path to college and the military, and we were going to go into the upper house. Good afternoon. <coughs> My name is Jim Nassen. I'm the managing partner of Pro Marine Boat Sales. Uh, we, we opened our business here about four years ago, but over in Bay Point, we specifically target the water resources that are so local to us. This, this venue is unmatched, I think, in the southeast United States for what we have with the water resources around us, the ability to do concerts, fishing tournaments and things like that. It's just an unmatched facility and I think it's the Old Salt, the city, and this venue is, is an incredible team to uh, put Madeira Beach on the map and keep it. And I would ask the same as, as before is to consider waiving the fee. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm just gonna say the importance of fishing in Madeira Beach. Uh, I think there is one, two, five members that served on um, Congressman David Jolly's Fishing Advisory Board. Every one of us either is or has been a board member of the Old Salt. That's Tom Berdinsky, Bobby Spade, Randy Keyes, Dan Chasey, and myself. That speaks volumes of Madeira Beach, guys, that a congressman has to have to serve and put a fish in hand. So guys, congratulations for what the Old Salt has done and is doing. Uh, Ashley Perkins is uh, called to roll. 
Commissioner Hodges. Okay, this is more of the question is was that the way that or is it that the Oh yeah, what it, what was the was the motion to waive it or not waive it? The motion was to approve the addressed application and the decision by the Office of Special Agent was, was to, to waive it. Waive it. Okay. And the application included the, the oh. fee. So, so uh, yeah. I think what what would make me a less director comfortable is if we had had a clear uh, approval or event application for payment of the fees waiving the rental fee while sorry uh, holding uh, old folks responsible for returning the field to the to the condition they were in when they when they took over from the state Mr. Mayor, I'll amend my motion to uh, for the approval of the application and waive the fee and giving the responsibility back to the old salt for making the field pristine or, or back the way they they were. Very well. Make a second for further comment. Mr. Mayor, the only comment I'd like to make again is I, I think the, we all know what's <coughs> what's happened in the in the local elections. There's 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 been a shift in in power members and, and it wasn't uh, a ploy to get something swept under the rug. It was a request from a very uh, a big friend of the city so to speak. So I think everyone in the room is aware of what we're doing. Everyone I think would have made the same decision and I'm confident that the Detroit Elections Commission would have made the same decision if it was just requested to the city that we take it up a little early so that there's another three people in line to elect the, the sponsor to the, uh, to the event program. I appreciate everybody coming. I appreciate uh, the holding this meeting um, Commissioner Lister and Hodges uh, obviously we've got a little list of issues in regards to the future events and what what, what we are doing and I look forward to further working with you both and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you both again soon thank you Commissioner Hodges yes Mayor Palladino yes Commissioner Lister yes <laughs> Commissioner Stovey Thank you.